Welcome to the Breaking 90 podcast, where we talk about all things sustainable fat loss. We take people on 90-day journeys to creating fat loss forever. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoy the episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Breaking 90 podcast. I'm your host, Alex Harriman, here with my co-host, Kelly Sarlo. We are two of the coaches of Breaking 90 Fitness. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoy today's episode. Hey, Kelly. Hi, Alex. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm good. I am so happy. Two of my favorite shows either have come back or are coming back. And I'm just on cloud nine. Is it Yellowstone and what is it? Ted Lasso. Yeah. You already know. And shrinking. I I know. Um did you see that? Roy Kent is having a guest appearance in Shrinking. He's one of the writers, so that makes sense. Yeah, I'm just curious to see to what capacity. I saw it, I saw him in like a one second clip in the ad, and I'm really excited to see to what capacity he's going to show up. I also love that you call him Roy Kent. That's his name. Okay. Forever. <laughs> I'm super excited specifically because, and I won't spend too much time on this, as you know, I love all things emotional intelligence. And These two shows are all about that, plus wicked wit. So it's just like, it's heartwarming, it's heartbreaking. It's just all of the things in in one or two shows that I just think are growing people. They are really, really good shows. Um, Apple knocked those two out of the park. Yeah, yeah, thrilled. Okay, want to transition? Yeah, what do you got? Okay, so I've been thinking a lot about specifically people that we get on calls with who are interested in the program they want to lose weight they want to strengthen transform their bodies they're super stoked about doing the program and then what they express is fear that they themselves won't be able to follow through Mm. and I want to talk to those people today because I know when we're on calls with them you know we coach to a certain degree but it's really to figure out like you know are you wanting to hop into this program? And what holds them back is either a history of seeing themselves not follow through and being unsure that they themselves are actually going to break that pattern. And I'm curious, you know, if we had longer with them, if we had the opportunity to, and we broke our our own rules and actually coached them, what would you say to those individuals? Before we go down this path, I want to start by saying there's there's two different people that get on that call with us. There's so usually what happens is somebody comes to us through a referral, word of mouth, or our social media, and they see our messaging or they hear a story from a friend and it really resonates with them. They get on a call with us and then they either join our program or they don't join our program. And that might be their choice or our choice, because we're never going to coach somebody that we don't think we can help. So if we get on that call and we we don't think we're the right fit or a good fit, we're going to point you in a good direction. Um, but say we get on that call, we're going to go deep. We're going to ask you some uncomfortable questions. We're going to figure out what's working for you, what's not working for you, what your goals and obstacles and all of that looks like and then we're going to map out a plan and at the end you're going to say yes let's do it or no no i'm not going to do it the thing is that a lot of people won't just say no they want to say let me think about it with no intentions of thinking about it let me talk to my spouse with no intentions of talking to their spouse i can't financially afford it or any other number of reasons why I'm not going to commit. The truth is, it all almost always circles back to what Kelly said. There's a belief there that you're not going to succeed. There's a belief that you won't commit and stick to the program. There's a belief that the program won't work, or you're afraid, and you're fearful to jump into something. And so it's easier to say, no, 
I'm not going to spend the money on this. No, my spouse is not going to be interested in this. No, the time of year is not going to work. It's easier to say one of those things than it is to say, I don't think I'm going to succeed. And the truth is, if you with 100% certainty knew you were going to succeed, none of those other things would probably matter to you. You'd be like, let's roll. Let's do this. So we need to boil that down and say, what is that? What is that? Is that a is that a lack of belief in yourself or is it a lack of belief in us in the program? And and either one is fine, but you need you need to identify that because just saying, nah, I'm not gonna spend the money on that, or no, nah, I'm not gonna like this, this isn't gonna work for me. Because you 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 got onto that call with the intentions of moving forward and doing this. And the chances are, if we were like, yeah, it's free, let's start today, you'd say yes, but that doesn't mean you're going to get results. And truthfully, like people don't pay attention when something is free. Mm -hmm. But, but so what is really stopping you is the fact that it's like, oh, now I've got to put something on the line. I need to make a financial commitment or I have to commit to my partner and be like, yeah, I've committed to this thing and I'm actually going to follow through on it. And that's scary for you. (laughs) That's scary for you because like I said, if you with 100% certainty could guarantee your success, you were going to come into this program and achieve exactly what we lay out in that discovery call together none of that other stuff would hold you back. You'd be like, yeah, let's let's do it. So that's really, really what you need to ask yourself and look into with yourself before you come to us is like, well, what what are your thoughts on that, Kelly? I, no, I, love, I love it. And I think some people are willing to admit those things. And we do, we, we hear that on the call and some people are not willing and they use the excuses that you're talking about. But bottom line, I love that you've pointed out, if we could fast forward and show you 90 days from now, all this, all the progress that you actually did make, this would not be a conversation. Yes. So yeah, I'm, I'm curious. I don't want to interrupt you though. No, go, go ahead. I'm curious what you would say to those individuals if we had the opportunity to actually coach them, because I know we don't, we don't dive into coaching on those calls. Mm. We're letting them feel out if they want to commit to making change. What would you say to reassure them either about themselves or about the process so that they had that confidence in those next steps? I mean, at some point in your journey, you're going to have to take a leap of faith on yourself and you're going to have to take a leap of faith with others. Like we can't, we can't sit at home wishing, sitting, waiting, wishing (laughs) that that our lives are going to change right our lives change when we take action and if that's with us with another program with another coach or on your own you need to start doing something differently you wouldn't be on that call with us if you realistically were going to be able to continue doing what you're doing and see progress and and a lot of the times we get there like, you know what, I'm going to try this on my own first. And if it doesn't work, I'll come back to you. It probably isn't going to work. If it was going to work, you probably would have already made it work, unless you're drastically going to change something. And and I say drastic, but maybe that's the wrong words, because drastic is probably what's bringing you back here every time is that you're trying to drastically change everything. And when you join this program with us, we're going to show you how damn easy this is. We're going to map it out in a way that it doesn't feel overwhelming, that it isn't drastically different. And you're going to think it's too easy at first. It's not going to make results. But then over time, you're going to see you're going to see the power of consistency over intensity. Um, I think you just nailed it. No, honestly, it's just to reinforce everything that you just said is that there's likely a fear of needing to make drastic change because that's all you've been in the pattern of doing. And Alex is pointing out, like, we're actually going to come in and educate you that drastic is the reason that you're struggling in the first place and that it's not supposed to be that way. Well, and then couple that with the fear of an investment, the fear of a time commitment, the fear of telling your spouse, your loved ones that you're now 
doing something important and exciting to you? And what if I fail? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And, and also I'll just add on again, right? Many of those individuals who are on the call are saying, I can't tell my spouse that I'm trying another thing because they've told me, but you never follow through with the others. And it's interesting because it's an it's a fair and true argument, but at some point it needs to not be true and we need to give ourselves that opportunity. Well, and you got to change your own narrative, right? Yeah. Now, from a commitment standpoint, I I believe so fiercely in what we offer that if we get to the end of that call and we say yes, we can help you, I 100% believe we can help you. Yeah. If we don't think we can, we're going to point you in a different direction. Mm -hmm. So if we get to the end of that call and we're like, yep, 100% guaranteed we can help you, I stand behind that. If you come into the program and you actually do the things we tell you to do, you actually do the things we tell you to do, and you don't see progress or you hate the program or you're like, this isn't for me, like I will give you your money back walk away. I don't care. I don't want to keep your money if we're not helping you. But you have to do the things that we're, we're telling you to do. You can't come into a program, buy into a program and expect it to change your life without you being the biggest character in this play. You have to do the biggest part. So although what we see time and time again is we put a financial commitment on the line. We put a time commitment on the line. We tell our spouses and our friends and our family that we're doing something. All of these things together create momentum and give us that now I have to make it work mentality. And usually you're going to. There's still the, 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 there's still the possibility of doing all that and then not taking action. And I promise you, you won't see results. It's not enough. You have to be willing to come in, take action, dig in, do the deep work, put your hand up when you're struggling, um, have the difficult conversations with us along the way, have some wins, have some losses and ride it out. But if you do that, I promise you see results. And if at any point you're like, this is not freaking working for me, I'm doing everything you're telling me and it's not working for me and you want to walk away, I'll give you your money back. <laughs> Fair. I, I'm going to throw something out there as well and please correct me if you disagree um many people will say like oh I just you know what like I don't know I'm afraid to disappoint I'm afraid to disappoint you as a coach and I would argue that that's kind of a good thing right like yeah there is a component of I'm never going to teach you through shame I'm never going to judge you there's always going to be a way of problem solving what it is you're doing and breaking it down into manageable pieces so that you see success we're going to troubleshoot that as coaches and that little bit of, I want to succeed and I want to do the thing that you're telling me to do is good, mm. right? It's what we all felt in, in school at some point when a teacher gave you an assignment and it's like, oh, okay, I don't want to fail them. I don't want to, you know, so like that little bit of motivation is good. I think there should be some level of not real fear, but fear in, in terms of, okay, this person knows what they're doing. I'm going to, I'm going to follow through. Yeah, I don't disagree. I mean, if we look back to like our sports careers, like if you're playing a competitive sport and your coach sees you busting your ass and you're you're impressing your coach, you're making your coach proud, what's likely to happen? Things get better. You get you're probably going to get more time in the game. Yeah. <laughs> right? You're going to see you're going to improve at your sport, you're going to get more time in the game, you're going to be more passionate about the sport and and like Kelly said, things are going to continue to get better. Now, I don't disagree with anything Kelly said. That cannot be your one of your biggest motivators, though. That can be a motivator, right. but disappointing me cannot be your biggest motivator. Because mm -hmm. we, we give a lot of mental capacity to your success. We sit down as the coaches on a weekly basis. We look at your progress. We look at your check-ins. We look at your compliance and your attendance and how things are going. And we talk about okay, what needs to happen with this person to make them succeed? What needs to happen with this person to make them succeed? We do that every single week. And we think about you guys all the time. But at the end of the day, I'm still going to be able to sleep at night. Yeah. And and I don't mean that in a rude way. Like I, I'm upset if you're not succeeding. Don't get me wrong. But I cannot be your biggest motivator. I got my own shit to deal with. You, you have to be your biggest motivator. 
<laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. I just, I think I wanted to bring that up so that people don't feel like that needs to be 100% absent for them to be ready to get into a program. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. And like, that's good because if you didn't feel that way a little bit, then you're not going to care when we give you a kick in the ass. You're not going to care when we have the difficult conversation with you. You're just going to be like, whatever. I don't, I don't care if you're disappointed in me. I, I, this, this isn't important to me anymore basically it, it needs to be important enough to you that you don't want to let us down that you don't want to let yourself down that you don't want to let down your support network who you told all of them like hey I'm doing this big thing and it's really important to me it needs to be that important to you that you're you're basically everybody's behind you supporting you and pushing you along and saying keep going keep going you're doing awesome it's normal to hit these ruts in the road yeah, fair. And I mean, that bleeds into the idea that we also don't coach friends and family for the reason that you are missing those pieces of fear, right? Um, and and you've said this beautifully, is that what someone, the role that someone might have played at one point in terms of accountability, now maybe your relationship has changed and they are very much your support system and they are not the same as the people that are able to hold you accountable, right? Mm. Um, and that's good for people to know the difference too. As soon as somebody goes to an all-you-can-eat buffet with me, I can no longer coach them. <laughs> okay. That's <laughs> hilarious. They just don't think about me the same after. Fair. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, I also wanted to point out, too, that, like, you know, part of that conversation with someone who are who might still be feeling like, I don't know if I'm going to succeed, I don't know if I believe in myself, our job is to be able to break things down to teach you how to do things differently, right? And we are going to point out things in your journey that are worth celebrating that you might write off as or write off and, and dismiss as either irrelevant or not helpful. And having someone draw in those celebrations, point out what actually might be some of your strengths that you're discrediting is going to build back up that self-esteem. And as any person knows you just think about a kid you pat them on the back once and they they feel the self-efficacy that that idea of i can to tackle the next thing and sometimes more often than not self-efficacy is what's missing in a lot of people's journey right and it, when a coach can hand you back that feeling you can tackle more than you were originally able to believe in yourself yep the this is a tough one, but ask yourself if you can honestly communicate when you're struggling. Mm -hmm. And you, the answer doesn't have to be yes, because we can help you with that too. But that is my number one determining factor on whether or not you'll succeed. Mm -hmm. I, if you can communicate through wins, losses, and everything in between, I guarantee your success. Because there's nothing we haven't seen. There's nothing that we haven't helped clients overcome through communication. Hey, I'm really struggling this week. This isn't going well. This isn't going well. I'm having a hard time with this. If you can say that, hop on a call or, or send a couple messages back and forth in that time of struggle, I promise your success. If you shut down and struggle in silence, online coaching won't work for you. Mm -hmm. and, and you might be at home right now being like oh yeah i am the type of person who struggles in silence that's fine there's those type of people are everywhere i get that you have to be if you're going to take a leap of faith like we talked about at the beginning into something like this you have to be willing to change what your norm is you have to be willing to try something new take that leap of faith put your trust and belief in someone else because that's that's how we make change that's how we can actually help you overcome and and become the new version the 2.0 version of yourself mm -hmm. yeah I love that I've got a current client actually who very much struggles putting her hand up when she's having a hard time and she in a vulnerable moment shared with me that she and her friend had an acronym which is the word fine and I can't remember e but it was fucked up introverted and neurotic 
And so now we've just kind of woven it into the program that if she sends me a message, I'm fine. It's a signal for me to do a check-in. It's a signal for me to say, okay, what do we need to do here? Well, and it's it's neat how people find ways to put their hand up in ways that they're comfortable with because it felt like too much for her to articulate it in so many words, but hmm. sending the acronym was enough and it let me know where she was at, right? Yeah. Um, so even being collaborative, in the communication, even if it is just one word, um, can be enough to get you on your way. We have lots of ways to identify this as coaches too. Like we have so many, we have so many checkpoints built into the program to identify this early on. Things for things for, on a weekly basis, we're asking you to do a weekly check-in. We're asking you to give us your traffic light. Are you green, yellow, or red right now? And you don't have to do all these things, but these are all put in place to help us identify. We're asking you to share wins. We're asking you to, uh, small, small things like, hey, what book are you reading right now? Mm -hmm. All of these opportunities for you to communicate and participate are an easy way for us as coaches to take an outside look in and be like, mm, that was a weird response for that person. I better check in. Mm, I haven't heard from this person in a while. I better check in. Mm, this person's constantly saying they're a green light nobody is constantly a green light I better check in like these these are ways that we have worked around and we use these to overcome that struggle and silence mentality but part of it's still on you and and part of it comes from you putting your hand up and saying hey I actually am a yellow light right now and how can we catch this before it becomes a red light? Because that's that's easier on both of us. And we try to do that with all of our clients. Catch them at yellow, bring them back to green. Once it gets to red, it's it's still totally achievable. It just becomes more work. Yeah, love that. I, I want people to feel the openness that exists in the program. I want people to feel the empathy that also exists because I think for for a lot of individuals when they're contemplating signing up for anything all or nothing comes in it's success or fail and and we want you to see the world of everything in between of how we can redefine success or mini successes along the way um, so that each step feels doable yeah that's a good point I mean our, our promise in our program is that we're going to help you lose 15 pounds and learn how to keep it off for life that doesn't make sense for everybody and that's okay. Like, we'll, we'll, we'll identify that early. We'll identify that probably on your very first call and be like, yeah, well, the place you're at right now, we're, we're likely not going to lose 15 pounds. You're not, you, it might either even be where you're starting at in terms of weight or body composition, or it might be what obstacles you're faced with. But mm -hmm. we will identify that and help you paint a realistic picture of what makes sense for you. There's no way I could say with with a clear-cut answer that everybody should achieve this because that doesn't make sense for everybody but we'll identify it early we'll map out a reasonable a reasonable plan that doesn't feel overwhelming so if you're looking at that 15 pounds you're like holy frig i don't know i don't know if i've got it in me to lose 15 pounds in the next three months i've got so many other things don't avoid having that conversation with us don't wait for the perfect time to lose 15 pounds where our goal is actually to make you lose weight sustainably, which looks different from person to person and teach you how to keep it off. And mm -hmm. so we'll map that out. And if at any point in your first 90 days that changes, we'll sit down, we'll have that conversation with you and we'll, we'll talk about what the changes mean and where that's going to take us. Love it. And no matter what, like you said, body composition, how you're coming in, that second part of the promise holds true, right? They're still going to learn how to keep it off. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And, and some people go over 15. A lot of people go under 15. We're going to, we're going to be realistic with you. We're not here selling um, extreme fixes, quick fixes, cleanses, detoxes. We're not doing that. So don't like, we will never push you faster than you should actually be pushed. Love it. Well, thank you. It's great. I hope it, I hope it offers a lot of insight to the people that are sitting on the fence that are that are stopping themselves from taking action for for whatever reason that might be hmm. wonderful i've got a tip okay what is it i haven't tried this yet or like i will admit that but i saw where you put a baking sheet with parchment paper dollops of cottage cheese which i'm willing to try 
and then you sprinkle everything bagel seasoning on top of it and you bake it for a bit and it becomes almost this like crunchy little like a bagel or something yeah so for for those of us who are following the program it's a straight protein um which is fantastic and hopefully hopefully i can get back to you and tell you it's wonderful yeah i'll wait until you try that one okay Um, but maybe if you mix it with some greek yogurt it'll have a better consistency come on come on (laughs) do you actually think that i don't know i have no idea i'm not a big expert i don't cook so like (laughs) any tip helps (laughs) <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome well i'm curious to hear how it is <laughs> cool nevertheless i had fun today me too me too thanks for being here guys thanks for listening uh wherever you are right now take a screenshot share it to instagram and tag at breaking 90 fitness 